Carl Gustav Jung spent part of his life working alongside Freud. Although Jung was at first influenced by Floyd, Freud, ultimately he rejected many of Freud's conclusions, especially those concerning religion. Jung rejected Freud's view that neuroses were caused by repressed sexuality. He concluded that the complete loss of self-awareness from which schizophrenics suffer is greater than mere sexual disturbance. He concluded that the libido as the cause of neurosis that affects the whole personality was something more complicated than mere sexual drive. Jung noticed how people who were dreaming or suffering from psychic disorders were often preoccupied with similar ideas and images. To account for this, Jung postulated a division of the unconscious mind into personal unconscious and collective unconscious. The collective unconscious is a vast and ancient part of the mind which contains the blueprints for a whole range of ideas and images that are shared by the whole of humanity. Each one of us is born with the tendency to conceive similar kinds of primordial images. One effect of this tendency is that similar images will be produced in dreams. Jung believed that the God concept is one of these primordial images. The collective unconscious means therefore that many of our ideas about God will be shared with other people. Miss Frank Miller, an American woman, was a performer and lecturer who often gave speeches in character as some cultural or historical figure. Jung felt that she showed early signs of schizophrenia and was particularly interested in a dream where she described where she was a moth desiring light. Jung analysed the dream as being comparable to a person being drawn to God, the sun or light representing God, the moth representing the person. He noticed how this parallel between God and light can be found in countless religious traditions. The Aztec preoccupation with the sun and the Christian view of Jesus as the light of the world are two examples. According to Jung, the fantasy of Miss Miller and the likeness drawn by religions between light and the deity are all derived from the collective un Jung gave the technical name archetype or aspects of the self to the part of the psyche that creates these images. Jung was not saying that the experience of our ancestors are somehow handed down to us in the form of a set of mental, mental pictures with which we are born. He was saying that the mind contains structures which when combined with the knowledge gained through our experience construct uniform images. In Jung's words in his book Symbols of Transformation, it is not a question of inherited ideas, but of a functional disposition to produce the same or very similar ideas. The archetypes cannot be known directly. They are mysterious and inaccessible to the conscious thought. However, they are projected outwards in the forms of myths and the symbols through dreams and visions. And in this way, they can be known. If one archetype becomes more dominant in the psyche, then the person suffers from neurosis or even schizophrenia. The journey to mental wellness required making the archetypes conscious, or to put it another way, integrating the conscious and unconscious mind. For Jung, knowing and participating in the religious symbols and narrative was absolutely crucial for understanding the archetypes. The archetypes can be exemplified by the anima and animus. These are the female and male archetypes respectively. Both men and women have them. In general, men have to make their anima con conscious and women the animus. These archetypes can be known through relating to mythical or religious figures or even symbols. The anima is represented in figures like Eve and the Virgin Mary in Christianity, but also in images such as the cave or a ship. The animus is presented by the eagle, bull or tower. Male characteristics of aggression and the phallus are obvious here. The persona archetype refers to the mask, a, 
a classical Greek actor wore to identify their role. This is the archetype of the self that we present to the world and related to, the, to our whole in life, to our role in life. We are a student or a teacher. If the persona archetype is too strong, we have anxiety dreams about appearing naked in our place of work. The shadow archetype denotes the disposition to portray the darker sides of our characters. This archetype contains everything about us which we cannot face and which we don't want to reveal. It contains our ability to perform actions which go against our moral principles. In other words, the darker side of our persona. It can be projected as Satan, monsters or baddies in myths and stories, either ancient or modern. These figures seem particularly powerful to us because they tell us about our own potentiality to evil. Jungian psychologists would describe the obsession some people have with brutal crimes, not as a fascination with other people, but as their journey to understand their own shadow. Once the reality of the shadow is faced at an unconscious level, its power as an archetype is brought into balance with all the others, and it cannot rule us in secret from the depths of the unconscious mind. When we are particularly repelled by a person, often for no apparent reason, Jung would say that what is happening at the unconscious level is that we're projecting our own shadow onto that person and are then therefore horrified by it. It is a common way of thinking to say that we don't like people because they represent the characteristics we don't like in ourselves. Jung would agree with this and emphasise that we may be completely unaware of these characteristics or potentialities because they are at an unconscious level. For Jung, the self was the organising principle of the psyche or mind, and so in a sense also archetypal. For Jung, the absence of religion was a very bad sign for psychological health. The self needs religion in order to achieve psychological wellness and balance between the archetypes. Jung argued that religion performs the role of maintaining the balance of the mind and preventing neuroses through an innate process known as individuation. Individuation is the process by which individuals integrate the conscious and unconscious parts of their personality. It results in a psychologically balanced personality through the acceptance of the various archetypes into the conscious mind. To maintain health, there needs to be a balance between the unconscious mind and the conscious. There also needs to be balance among the different archetypes. It is the failure of the to maintain this balance, which is the main cause of mental disorder and neurotic illness. For example, someone who has an excess of mental energy concentrated upon the unconscious will appear disconnected from their surroundings, since they will be aware chiefly of the images generated by the unconscious. Jung argued that whilst the first part of a person's life involved coming to terms with the outer environment and its challenges through work, friendships and relationships, the emphasis in the second part from middle aged onwards is to come to terms with one's own personality. Faced with declining opportunities, energies and possibly health, the individual must find new purpose and meaning in life through assimilating into one's conscious mind the numerous unconscious components. Individuation as an innate process is one which is governed by the self archetype. According to Jung's understanding of religious experience, any process or attitude that is governed by archetypes may be termed religious. Upon this basis, individuation is a religious process. Jung argued that the self aids the process of individuation by generating images of wholeness. The most famous example of these images is the mandala, which became for him the archetypal symbol of the self. This design is traditionally understood to represent balance and wholeness. Mandalas are found in many religions and cultural traditions and usually some show some kind of organising principle around a central point. They are used ritually or in meditation to symbolise the journey to enlightenment, salvation or wholeness, and also understood as the journey to the centre. 
Only when all the outer components are taken account of can the journey to the centre occur. Dreams of circles or mandalas are very significant as they are glimpses of the very deep archetype of the self. Another major example is the religious image of God. Jung claimed that the images created by the God archetype are one and the same as those images created by the self archetype. It makes sense, therefore, to say that it is through religious images that the personality achieves its goal of integration. The religious images are used by the mind to individuate the personality. The value of religion now becomes clear, for if one rejects religion, one is at the same time rejecting a substantial part of individuation mechanism. Those who reject religion are less likely to individuate successfully and therefore are more likely to experience neurosis as a result of the remaining psychological tension. For this reason, Jung concluded that religion is a valuable entity. The actual images we have of God are picked up through our own experience in the world, but the disposition to generate them is innate. For example, the Christian concept of Jesus or God is just one manifestation of the archetypal tendency to develop an image of a perfect or powerful being. Jung believed that an experience of the God archetype constituted a religious experience on Rudolf Otto's definition of the term. Such an experience is simply one that the subject receives independent of his will. It is no more or less significant an experience whether it comes from an objectively existent God or a hidden level of the mind. The God archetype, like all archetypes, is ineffable since it comes from a part of the mind about which nothing concrete may be known. Jung argued that the God archetype was the core of all the symbols and imagery of God in all the religions. As with the other archetypes, the God archetype cannot be known directly. It can only be known through symbols projected out from the unconscious. Jung's claim is that the unknowable God archetype is a component of the collective unconscious. That is to say, everyone has it. It is universal. Symbols only work if they remain dynamic, if people think that symbols are merely representations of objective outer reality, they lose their power. Thus, for Jung, much of organised religion has lost its meaning. The symbols had become what he called mere signs. They had lost their power to actualise the God archetype latent in the collective unconscious. This failure of organised religion was encapsulated for Jung in a dream he had as a boy of God excreting on Basel Cathedral. The meaning of this is obvious, that God despises organised, formal, dead religion. Jung didn't believe in God, but he claimed he knew him, not as an objective external object, rather as a psychic truth.